today we're going to go over symmetry and what that is. So first we need to um, talk about what it is. Reflectional symmetry is line symmetry. Which just means um, if you just looked at this line, the part to the left and to the right of that line, or diagonally left, diagonally right, whatever, um, is a mirror image. You can fold it over that line and it would be perfectly on itself. The same thing with this one. I could fold it along that line and it would meet perfectly. You wouldn't have anything um, overlapping on a side or anything. So it's line symmetry. And then you always have a line of symmetry, which is really just your axis of symmetry. If you remember from Algebra 1, you learned about this when doing quadratics. So whenever you had a quadratic like this, you had an axis of symmetry. In other words, it's a reflection. Your right side looks just like your left side. So it's the same type of thing. Um, and it maps onto itself. In other words, if you were to fold it along that line, it would be completely on top of itself. There would be no part that isn't on top of another part. Um, Okay, and then we're going to practice this. So symmetry. Uh, lines of symmetry can only be straight vertical, horizontal, or straight diagonal. So like in this one, there's no good way to do symmetry because if I were to do it this way and fold it, it would not be, this part would be sticking out over here, right? Because there's nothing there. This is obviously longer than this little piece here. So it does not have um, vertical, it doesn't have horizontal for the same reason. This part sticks out. There's no meeting part, right? So that one does not have it. Number two. I can draw a line here. And it will be perfectly reflected. So that's one. I can draw a line here. And it will be perfectly reflected. Two. I can draw a line here. That's three. One here four and then it would have a fifth one here so um, it's always the point of the pentagon to the midpoint of the other so this is the midpoint so point to midpoint point to midpoint that's how i drew all these so in case you're taking these notes and you get lost and you're not sure how i draw all these it's point to midpoint of the other side so this one is yes it obviously does have it three has it this way and this way this one cannot do it diagonally because if so, this part would stick out over here. Like that's not the way that it works. It's not a square, it's a rectangle. Then we also have things that are called rotational symmetry. So rotational symmetry is a figure that can map on itself whenever you turn it between zero and 360 degrees. And the reason we use 360 is because if you've turned something all the way around, then you're just repeating the process again after that. So um, until you turn it all the way around, those can be turns. But otherwise, um, it would just be repeating what you did originally. So this guy, um, because this is going to be where it's rotating from, um, will have five different turns. And we'll go over that in a, in a minute. Um, there's always a center of rotation, which is the center of the figure. So just like um, this pentagon, this is my center of rotation. And then we have orders of symmetry, and that is the number of times a figure can map onto itself as it rotates. So how many times can you turn it and get the exact same picture back? So this first one has no rotational symmetry, and if you're not sure, turn your paper. Turn your paper and see if you can get the exact same image again. Um, this one does because you can, it looks the same right side up as it does upside down. So it has two. This one has an order of three because it is an equilateral triangle. So it will look this exact same um, whenever you turn your paper up to three times. Because this can be your top and then this can be your top. And then this can be your top whenever you 
turn your paper. So all of those, it would be three times, right? Um, this one has an order of four because you would get the exact same image for four turns. So every 90 degrees, you would get the exact same image again. This one, you would have to turn it five times. Magnitude is the smallest angle it can be rotated. So just like this, I told you it's turned four times. So that means every 90 degrees, you will get the same image every time you turn it 90 degrees. That's the magnitude I'm talking about. The magnitude is how many degrees you turn it to get the exact same image back. So just like this one, it was turned six, um, yeah, six times, and that's how they got it 60 degrees. It, every time that you turn it 60 degrees, you will get the exact same image back. So you find that um, by doing 360 divided by whatever the order is. In other words, how many times can you turn it? And then you would divide that by 360. Because this is a hexagon, you can turn it six times. So 360 divided by six gives you that 60 degrees. All right, so do any of these have rotational symmetry? If so, what is its order and magnitude? So this was actually um, the other one. Anytime you have regular polygons, just all that means that they all have equal sides. All these sides are the same length. Um, so that's all a regular polygon is. So it could be a hexagon, a pentagon. If they're all the exact same length, then however many sides it has, that is your order. So this one has six sides and it is regular, meaning all the same sides and angles. So the order is six, and that means that the magnitude is 360 divided by six, which is 60 degrees. This guy does not, because even this is shorter than that. And remember I told you the sides have to be equal. So this does not have a magnitude or an order. For number six, I want you to look at this picture, then close your eyes, Turn your paper upside down and look at it again. It's the exact same. So it has an order of two because you can turn it twice. So its magnitude is 360 divided by two, which is 180 degrees. Lastly, we have plane symmetry. So plane symmetry is when a figure can be mapped onto itself by a reflection in a plane. So in other words, I take a box, I put a sheet of paper all the way through it, right? Like imagine that I'm awesome and I have this special power where I can take a sheet of paper and just split it right down the middle of the box. And if the left side looks the same as the right side, then it has plain symmetry. And then we have axis symmetry. So in other words, if you were to shove a pencil through something and turn it, does it look the same every time that you turn it? Um, and it doesn't have to be like the cone, it would look the same no matter how tiny of an angle you turned it or how big of an angle that you turned it. Um, but you can do something like um, like the hexagon, right? Like this one, um, if it was a three-dimensional shape. So if it, if it was three-dimensional, it would still have six turns to it. So this can have a limited amount of turns. It doesn't have to be a circle like this cone is. Um, but it's basically you shove a pencil through it and you spin it around the pencil. Does it look the same ever again until you get back to the beginning? So we have these two figures, and we got to talk about which symmetry it has. In number seven, there's no way I could shove a pencil in there and turn it around the pencil and get the same picture back. But if you were to slide a piece of paper, this is going to be hard for me to draw, but it's basically taking up straight down the middle like this, and then you can't see this back in. But it's through there, and it's through here too. And this is my sheet of paper, right? It's like that sheet of paper hopefully you can tell it's hitting it horizontally straight through the middle it would split it in half so this does have plain symmetry and lastly is this one um, I can shove a piece of paper in it many different times and get a reflection on both the right and the left so I could do it like this where it was shoved down the center of it, right, and the right and the left would look the same, or if a piece of paper was shoved this way through it, it would look the exact same on the right and the left. Um, also, if I shoved a pencil through it, so down here, there's my pencil going through it, and I turn that thing, it would look the exact same five different times. 
So it has both plane and axis symmetry. And we're done.